Okay, so today what I'm showing you is something that I've always wanted to have, and that's an observation hive. And this is an observation hive I purchased as uh, an already assembled kit. It comes with everything except the glazing, and so we have to do that ourselves. But this is called a swing view hive. It holds eight deep frames, and I'm going to go step by step how to set it up. And I had a special order of this plexiglass. I got the thick stuff. So it's a little over a quarter of an inch thick and its clarity is perfect. It's acrylic and of course you have this paper on it that you have to peel off and make sure that your dimensions are perfect because you don't wanna to have to cut the plexiglass yourself. In this particular company, I will give you a link for them, but they do custom cutting for you and they were within a 16th of an inch to my dimensions. The next thing you have to do is bed the glass in a hundred percent pure silicon that's rated for all weather conditions and that's what we did we put the silicon bead down and now we're going to drop in the plexiglass and remember you test fit it dry before you put this in to make sure you don't have any problems and now once it's in i go around the edges and i press it up to make sure that the silicon bead goes the full width of the joint we don't want uh, any movement in this. We definitely don't want bees and debris to get between the plexiglass and the frames that came with this observation hive. And they mark the sides A and B, and we're looking at the top there, and that's actually a feeder screen. And this is the B side. It's all framed up. You can see that there's a full bead of silicon there. And you can later come and cut it off with a razor blade if you want to take out that excess. I ended up just leaving it but make sure that you absolutely fill the joint. Just for a lot of reasons, strength being the first. So we have the A side and the B side, nice and strong. You have the option, of course, to finish these frames, finish the woodwork, the exterior of it. I wouldn't put any finish inside or just leave it plain and I'm leaving it plain. This is the silicon tube that I used. 100% um, silicone, totally stable, inert material once it's dry. You wanna make sure when you're using this stuff that you have plenty of ventilation going and then once you have put the plexiglass bedded in the silicon into these frames give them at least 24 hours and here we are at the shed that i've decided to put the observation hive in and this is the included uh, landing board that goes with it and you have to drill a two inch diameter hole from the inside before you of course screw this on here and uh, they use two inch gray electrical conduit, the plastic stuff that's rated for sun exposure. And I had to do some modifications on the inside here because I'm using two by four supports and this shed was Amish built. So the dimensional lumber is a full, like when they say two by four, it is four inches. So I had to chisel some of that out and we're vertically mounting these two by fours. So they're glued and they're screwed in because it's gonna hold quite a bit of weight. Remember, this is an eight frame observation hive, and that's eight deep frames. So let's say at the outside, 20 pounds per frame. So you're looking at, yeah, quite a bit of weight if the thing actually filled up completely with honey. We know that's not likely, but if it did, you wanna definitely be able to support it. And this is the swing view mounting bracket that goes on the wall. Some people actually put this thing inside their house. I really didn't want to do that. I couldn't think of a great way that I wanted to keep it. Plus, inside your house, sometimes you have to tend to that. You'd have to pull the thing off and uh, carry it outside so that you could access the bees and do some maintenance with your observation hive. So here I'm just eyeballing the, uh, again, it's electrical conduit that came with it. And you can see that it's already cut out there. That landing board has a receiver for it that's perfect. I did not glue or do anything other than friction set that. And when you put the, the plate on for the wall, it also has a recess that uh, houses that tube that the bees will use to go in and out. And at the top, there's that threaded grommet so that you can put the bolt through the top. On the bottom, which is where the bees go in and out, it has that nice piece of angled wood that supports it. And then again, a little tail piece of electrical conduit sticks up and the swing view is actually going to turn on that. So what they want you to do is put down some beeswax so that it can sit on that and that becomes the gliding surface. 
And so here we are showing you the frame again without the glazing yet. And this is that little piece I talked about. And these are clumps of beeswax that I put down there. And we're just going to use the weight of the uh, swing view itself to smear that around. And of course beeswax is pretty stable. Here it is mounted now. And again you can see that the joints are cut out, dados or whatever you want to call that, that will accommodate the frames. And I'm going to show you step by step how I set it up. And those are quarter twenty threaded studs that are there that will hold the uh, frames on. So it looks pretty good. Stainless steel screens and again little segments that have been cut off of electrical conduit that act like spring clips that hold it in there. So it's easy to remove if you have to get inside. Also if you needed to close off the entry and exit point there is this little galvanized piece of steel there and it comes with a screw. So I just pull that out which opens it up so the bees can come and go. And then I just put that screw back in the hole there so I don't lose it. But if you ever have to close off your observation hive for transportation, that's the plate that you put in. The other thing is I'm going with uh, acorn plastic frames. These are food grade plastic frames that come with a heavy, heavy coat of beeswax on them. In the past I've used Pirgo and these are what I've gone to now. So, and the green stuff is actually drone frames. So you'll see that the, the cell size is much larger and uh, people use that to get drones to develop and they use that as some kind of protection for Varroa because they'll just pull out the drone. And then here's the um, white frames. It comes in white plastic or black. I prefer the black because I'm a photographer and I'm trying to get a look at egg development, larvae development, and uh, a lot of things that are going on, which is why I have the observation hive to begin with. Uh, the green here, I'm just showing it to you really close. And they're marked on the top. Again, these are acorn frames, and I'll put a link to that in the description. 1x means it's dipped once, 2x dipped twice, and 3x triple dipped, or what they call heavy wax coating. The more wax you have on these frames, uh, the more readily your bees will start to draw them out and make their, their honeycomb on that. So we're going to get to see all of that, and that's one of the great things about having an observation hive is we get to watch them draw out comb and start to uh, occupy the hive. Now if you want to put in wooden frames or something like that, go ahead because then you'll be able to watch how they draw out comb without foundation. And that company I believe also sells um, plastic frame foundation without the full frame, but I just personally prefer the full frames. And we're going to have both in here. So the top four frames will be the new acorn variety which now I prefer. They don't flex in the middle and they don't distort as much as the Pirgo frames which are going to be the bottom four uh, as much as those did and those are what are out in my beehives. So the next thing I have to do is bring in some frames of bees to populate the hive. So I'm going to a hive that uh, has a lot of activity. They've got some brood in there and I'm going to light load the observation hive because again I want to watch them expand. So I'm going to pull some frames that have some brood and some resources on them. And I want to put those inside the frame. And then I've mail ordered in this Weaver Queen, which is a survivor bee line. They're Varroa resistant. They're super hygienic. And she comes out of Texas. And there are workers, of course, in there because the queen can't feed herself. And you'll just put her on top of all the frames inside the observation hive and then what I did later was I just pulled that gray clip out and the stainless steel screen and I used forceps to withdraw the cage. So you want to make sure of course and pull the plug on the sugar side and now we're doing something different here. Normally you'd be requeening because the queen would have died and you'd have a queenless hive. That means that the bees that would be in there would be looking for a new queen and would readily accept a new queen that's not going to happen here because we're pulling frames from hives that have queens and those bees have pheromone associated with the queen in the hive they've come from. So again here's my first frame we're going to put that in there and again I don't want fully drawn out frames I don't want them to be complete because part of the fun is in watching them draw out wax on their own and watching the colony establish itself. And you notice how calm these bees are. You also want to position them carefully. You don't want to put it right up against the, the surface where 
the plexiglass will be because you want to maintain B space there. Thinking about where the comb will be and how far drawn out it will be and then leave additional B space. 3 sixteenths of an inch roughly is good. But remember that once you close it up, you're not going to have access to move these things around. So positioning them carefully now will be worth its weight in gold later. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the frames in one by one and going back out, back out to the apiary, collecting other frames. Now look at this one. It's absolutely loaded with pollen. There is also capped honey there. So these are resources that the bees are going to use to expand their colony. Now I did have to put on some protective clothing. Remember I'm getting into hives and I am taking away their brood. If you want to kick off a defensive response from a colony of bees, pull some brood frames and you'll see that they will really want to get you away from those resources. Much different than if you were just pulling honey supers. So here again, I'm just being very careful in the alignment of these frames. Now these are all worker bees. Most of them, my target bees of course, are nurse bees, bees that are still in their cleaning stages, feeding stages for larvae, and those that would otherwise occupy brood frames. And that's because they haven't been outside of their hive yet. They don't know where they live. All of their experience in life has been inside the hive. So that means, hopefully, that uh, they will be better prepared to occupy this hive and stay where I put them. Because the hives that I'm pulling them from are within 100 feet, actually, of this observation hive in the shed that it's in. Also, you get a glass jar with a, uh, a tin cap on it that is your feeder jar. It goes right on the top there, and I'm putting, of course, 50-50 sugar water. And I use super filtered water, and I heat it up and sanitize it carefully before I put that on the hive. And here it is all together, an 8-frame swing view hive. And if you've been watching any of my other videos that show macro uh, video close-ups of different behavior, whether it be a queen laying eggs or whether it be baby bees hatching or the development of larvae, um, that has all been filmed in this observation hive. And because we're in the shed, and now you can see there are larvae there, very small ones to the left. And again, here's the reason why I like the black plastic frames and in this case from acorn um, is because the contrast there lets me see eggs better and lets me see developing larvae and here we have a collection of bees that aren't doing a lot right now but what they are is forming a physical barrier around these larvae to keep the cooler air from getting to them and here is what looks like the start of a queen cell but what they actually did within days after installing these frames is they they dismantled that they chewed it all apart and some of these little areas here are packed now with pollen. Pollen varies widely in color. It could be Cheeto yellow, or it can be very pale green, and in some cases, almost uh, just off-white. And look at this variety of pollen here. As soon as a worker comes in and unloads the pollen directly into the cell, a worker bee then goes right in and starts to mix that pollen and seal it up uh, with a little bit of honey. And actually, the pollen will ferment in these cells. So if you, you can smell it. If you open a, a pollen area that's been there for 48 hours, you start to smell that it is um, fermenting. And actually, the two-day-old pollen that's been stored is most frequently used by those nurse bees. So here we are again. I want you to notice this behavior. Here's the queen and her workers, and they're in this cage. Look at the abdomen of the occupants of this colony right now. They are trying as hard as they can to sting through that screen. See how they bent their abdomens towards the occupants of this little queen cage. They're trying to kill off the occupants and the reason is they perceive the pheromone of this queen and these workers as alien to the hive and they definitely don't want them there. So we're going to get back to that later. Now we're going to show here that there are resources, see the pollen in the top, and then we also have honey lower down all around the brood that are currently hatching here. And that's a convenience thing. The nurse bees don't have to go very far to get resources to feed these baby bees. Of course, once they're capped, 
They're not eating anything, so it's only during the larvae stage that they're being fed. And then they'll come out of their capping on their own. These baby bees will go right to work and uh, they turn into nurse bees themselves and will turn around and attend to those other developing larvae. Now here we are back at the queen. This is 24 hours later. Notice the body posture of the bees that are on that screen now. Their abdomens are laid out straight and what they're actually doing is sticking their heads in and extending their tongues to make sure that that queen has plenty of food. Queens do not feed themselves. They're only fed by nurse bees in the hive. So now it's safe to pull the plug and release that queen into this new colony. And here again, we're just, we're actually shooting this through the opposite screen. There are vents left and right, top and bottom. And here's the queen out on her own. And she is fertile and she's set right about laying eggs. The only thing that really held her back in this new hive was the number of cells that were available for her to lay in. She laid an egg in every single cell that was not occupied. It was a fantastic experience. Now the observation hive is set up and ready to go. And now all we have to do is drink coffee and watch and learn about what goes on inside a honeybee hive. I hope you've enjoyed watching this and if you want to see bees at your leisure protected from weather, I suggest that you get an observation hive of your own or maybe even build one. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you again for your interest in honeybees. I hope this was helpful. See ya.